Russ who was both who was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean drag. Yeah, that's a good question. Place. So what do you what do you have to say about that guy? Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the latest edition of Views on the News. We have an interesting panel this week. We have, and I'm going to start with the person who's uh, arrived most recently. Uh, he's uh, not exactly a new boy because he's been on a couple of times before. Here he is, Diogo Duarte from from um, Lisbon. No, not Lisbon, but Portugal. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the item is on Lisbon that we're going to discuss. That's why it was in my head. So welcome, Diogo. Dr. Ty Wells, you're a regular. Welcome again. David Orenstein, another regular. These are two Americans. And, <laughs> New York to represent. All right. <laughs> and we have a Guy from Manchester, England. And also we have Dread Pirate Higgs from Canada. So we're a truly international show. Thanks for coming, guys. We claim dread. That's also America. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that because uh, I still think that Canada is a member of the Commonwealth. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to a rebellious territory. Yes. Yes, yes, indeed. yes, yes. yes. The king. Oh, we're getting political as soon as we got out the gate. <laughs> yeah. Let me just say that uh, uh, both Ty and I represent the rational part of America. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So item number one, marches. You know the various uh, cities over the world where Israel and Gaza activity is spilled over. So we have, we've had another march in London. This one, it's in support of the Palestinians, as is often the case, although last week we had one, it was more of a, not a march, it was a stationary a protest in the Trafalgar Square in favour of Israel. Anyway, this particular one is a motley collection. I want to show you a video to see if you can spot all the different interests that are involved. <laughs> There you go. Did you spot the CND people? Yeah. CND people. What's that? Campaign for nuclear disarmament. Yeah. It seems that. Really it, it seems that if there's a protest going on, <laughs> doesn't really matter what your campaign is. You're going to join it. Right. Yeah. Well, this happens an awful lot. You have. Um, you know, in, in the the original energy of uh, the marches, uh, and you had the same thing in New York when you had Zuccotti Park, and um, that you have uh, these people of goodwill who come out and are talking about injustice, and then of course by the week six, it's pretty much everybody who has a political or social or economic feeling about something they join it as well because they want to get their face uh, in, in the crowd too and so it dilutes mm -hmm. uh, really what's going on until eventually and this is like the bell curve of, of a lot of this um mm -hmm. until it just sort of falls back into the background again mm -hmm. yeah hmm. anybody else want to come in on that before i show you the next march which is very much more focused this one, I want you to see if you can spot any women. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
That's what I, the, the, I was waiting for the gorilla to walk across the field. <laughs> <laughs> I know the reference. That's a good one. Yes. <laughs> Well, there were plenty of women, but obviously in a minority. But there were women, and many of them were in all um, covered Islamic up. Yes, exactly. yeah. Yeah. they weren't obvious women, were they? That was um, mostly a male march. Yes. Mm. Mm. Got any comments to make with, on that? With, and with them, um, with banners in written in, um, we don't know what language, either Arabic or Urdu mm, yeah. or something, probably. Mm -hmm. Probably organised by the Council of Mosques, something like that, or, or some Islamic. Umbrella organizations. Mm -hmm. There's, there's been some. That's those Arabic, let's call them, messages have been under question because we don't know what they mean, and somebody has translated them as you know really horrendous, unacceptable language that we shouldn't be permitting to be waved on a flag. Oh. Mm. Have you guys seen the flag of um, of the Houthis? The flag of no. the Houthis. Oh no. yes, yes. It, it's got Houthis. a very funny thing written on it, like a slogan or something. Yes, you know what it says. It says something in the lines of uh, "Death to America, Death to Jews, and such yes. and such." Allah is the great. All right, that's yes. two strikes for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, so the issue here, really yeah, and, and, and all you need now is is death to academics, you know. Both right there, you go. <laughs> yeah, death to a anthropologists. A yes. trifactor. Seriously, yeah. I think it is a really bad form to have uh, written text on your flex, but that's right. just me. Mm. <laughs> yes, skull and crossbones is okay, of course. Right. <laughs> of course. There you go. I mean, it, it, what's interesting is, is having having Arabic writing on on the banner suggests you're not talking to the government; you're talking to other mm. um, speakers Your of mother. the language in question. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, well, the the issue here is we don't know what they're writing, and it could be speech that we would have, you know, disapproved of. Right. Well, it could it be had, hate speech. Yeah. Yes, if it had been spoken. So mm. they, it's it's like masking your face. You know, mm. you're. Mm. You're uh, denying the identity mm. in, in flag form in this case. Mm -hmm. well, overall, though, the, the, the march seemed reasonably, it was loud, but it didn't seem violent. You know what I mean? It was uh, mm. um, yeah. people just marching, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we come to the one that's happened in Lisbon, because this one, <clears throat> unlike... The previous ones we've seen, which have either been pro-Israel or pro-Palestine, this one, and I'm hoping that Diogo might be able to throw some light on this, seems to be an anti-Islam protest. And the, the text that went along with it is um, the Portuguese nationalists have had enough of the Islamization of Europe. Yeah, I heard about yeah. I heard about that. So I'll play this and you can feed back on me what you think. <laughs> It's a shame that the Portuguese flag, flag has the same colours as the Palestine flag. <laughs> we see this. <laughs> so what's that all about, Diogo? Um, firstly, I have to note that uh, we have a plenty of towns with uh, named after towns in the Holy Land, so it's not uh -huh. a really a big a surprise, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah uh, Racism is a complicated thing in Portugal because uh, we have a lot of, uh, we are very pretentious about it. I've seen someone in America make a comparison between racism in Europe in general and in America. And I think it fits a lot with Portugal, which is 
like uh, we don't we don't really care uh, we don't, we aren't really racist uh, against black people for example but then suddenly we are racist about uh gypsies or uh or muslim people and we don't even notice we don't call it racism um but apart from that i think people generally are tolerant unless they um they have a well they don't really interact with foreign people um so more about this particular protest um from what i gather this was a uh, this protest was originally uh, refused by the by the mayor uh, because you need a license to make uh, strikes and protests. But uh, the the there was a extreme right wing person or a neo Nazi, I think, who still went ahead with the with the organization of the protest. Apart from that, the news aren't really talking about it. Mm. They just mentioned um, uh, the the organizers of the protests being in fights with the government mm -hmm. well i could support any march in that that was against the islamization of europe what, well, is, uh, uh, what was interesting did you see the fascist salutes being made yes yeah, yeah. Uh, is this a fascist movement diogo uh, there isn't an explicit fascist movement in Portugal, but there are many small cults. Mm -hmm. There are skinheads. There are uh, like in most Europe. Yeah, I think particular and, about and, them. Were they singing a nationalist or a fascist song? No. Or... At the beginning, they were saying something like "Portugal is strong" or "Portugal is strong." Then they were singing the national the national anthem. Oh, so right. Nothing. No. No particular message. Mm. You correct me if I'm wrong, but haven't the Moors been in Portugal and Spain since like the eighth century? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the the whole Iberian Peninsula was a Muslim caliphate. Right, exactly. So they say, get those Muslims out of Europe. Well, they've they've been there for eight hundred years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I'm not, I don't think it's necessarily the same group but uh, it's not right. the moors which might be re regarded as uh, moderate muslims i suppose or historic traditional muslims it's the islamization it's the modern crew mm -hmm. you know the isis people mm -hmm. uh, well um i'm not really i don't think it's i'm a pretty i'm very pro uh, progressive so i'm not i don't really mind islam coming to our country but i hope they are moderate uh, Muslims and they follow the law. Yeah. I don't, don't really have... see Muslim um, people causing trouble here yet. I think this is a very yeah. re reactionary movement in part of the extreme right. Like they are yeah. responding to similar protests uh, around Europe. I mean, Joining there, in. There is, a, there is an issue that um, there are certain um, Muslim sort of scholars and thinkers and leaders who do see the, uh, their history in terms of the recovery of Muslim lands, such mm. as Portugal and Spain, yeah. and also the enlargement of the, of, of the Muslim Islamic sort of world empire, if you like, mm. to, to, to include the whole of Europe and the whole world. This yes. is definitely a strategy that some of them sort of espouse, yes. and, and and to to um for, so so that there's an interesting sort of tension going on there between those on the one hand and people uh, in Europe and in who you know who, who are who want to reject it, mm. and and, and I, at some stage something's going to either be done to sort of address it or it'll just happen over time with population and immigration that's yeah mm. Mm. It, the thing is too that um despite the fact that they may not be bad yet as uh, diogo put it um they always have a political agenda and that is to become an islam government essentially mm. uh, yeah. or islamic yeah. government that yeah, that's yeah. the goal ultimately is to have that control over everybody, yeah. not just yeah. themselves yeah. and their little crew. Do you yeah. have any Muslims or Islam Islamization in Canada, in, oh, yes. in British, British Columbia? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. 
what what about in um kentucky kentucky man if only i lived there tennessee <laughs> hey that's a sad <laughs> um yeah we have a couple of mosques and but they're more downtown the muslims that live in like our 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 more median states are fairly what's the best word uh multicultural and uh the most thing that they bring over that they have a very strong opinion on is food and beyond that uh yeah. very moderate and 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 easy going in fact even their mosques are open to like atheists and stuff like that so well yeah. i mean they are they are in the uk and and i mean the, the problem about it is that the smaller the muslim um, minority is in any country the more um into sort of being open and into faith and moderate and cooperative they are the problem mm -hmm. comes when they they get to large numbers and yeah. they start wanting to impose their regimes yes Sharia and can stuff. I, yeah can I, if I could add a, a slight, um, my nuanced view on that isn't so much how big the group is, it's just how interconnected and participating they are with other groups. And anytime you leave any group on its own, whether it's a Muslim group or Christian group or just people who really like My Little Pony, if you leave any small group by itself to fester, they become extremists because they don't have anything yeah. to to bounce their ideas off of and they call themselves in a trap of like an echo chamber, right? Oh, so yeah. like what I see is the, the metropolis aspect of getting people together tends to tamper down that dogmatic viewpoints. And whenever yeah, you look yeah, yeah. at really big cities and towns, it's the ones yeah. where it's culturally mixed that have most people egalitarian looking towards people's best yeah, interests. I, I, I think that's a good point. And the other point to make here is that, that the Muslim community, certainly in England, are not united around anything particularly, apart from Gaza, perhaps. They, you know, they are very, they are linguistically um, uh, diverse. They're divided into different sections and, and um, you know, um, traditions within Islam. Um, some of them are Sufi, some of them are Shia, some of them are Sunni. You know, and some of them are more secular, and 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 others more devout, and it that that you can't sort of really generalize about them, and I, and I think there's hope in that. Um, yeah. As well. I'm just wondering how my girls might have reacted a few years ago to the possibility of my little ponyism. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was a thing in America for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do have to say, though, that in 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 uh, tie to um, to sort of uh, bolster what you're saying, like if you look at the Muslim community in um, Detroit, uh, Michigan, which is uh, a very very large, uh, and where there is very, I, I don't think, an awful lot of intermixing of other groups, you find that that there that it's much more radical um, uh, yeah. uh, uh, in, in, in those communities um, uh, than in other places in the United States where Muslims are more integrated. Yeah. So in a, in a sense, the internet ought to be smoothing this out a bit, shouldn't it? Because it's harder to remain unconnected now. Hmm. Well, if only if you know from a faith perspective only if you allow um people on the internet i mean uh, mm. um hasidic jews don't use you know don't use the internet um they use yeah. cell phones they use other technology but they don't allow their children to go on the internet they don't allow yeah. their women to go on the internet yeah. um in other communities as well it's the same thing so oh. it's yeah you, know, you might have some level of access but you know there's no librarian for the internet saying what's true and what's false and mm. even allowing um, for access or censorship. Yeah. This, yeah. Well, I guess one quick last thought. You are, I've always said you are what's blocking you from seeing your horizons. Mm -hmm. That is, if you put a wall between yeah. yourself and your horizon, you are that wall. And you can yeah. always open up that wall. You can put a window through it. You can put a door through it. Yeah. Or you could have someone else set your wall for you, which comes with its own consequences. Mm -hmm. But that is what you are until you are willing to yeah, yeah. broaden those yeah. barriers. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, yeah. Isolationism yeah. is bad. True. Sure. Yeah. And tribal mm -hmm. at the same time. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very tribal. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you may have thought that um, there wasn't a lot of love lost between the Jews and the Roman Catholics, looking at their history. But 
Believe it or not, they're cuddling up together now. Listen to Ooh, this. <laughs> Listen to this. Concerned by the spiral of unprecedented violence in the Holy Land, Pope Francis condemns anti-Semitism. My heart is torn at the sight of what is happening in the Holy Land by the power of so much division and so much hatred, the Pope wrote to Jewish theologian Karma ben Yohanan. And he said he was addressing his Jewish brothers and sisters. So apparently Yohanan was among 400 rabbis who signed an appeal in December asking the Pope to acknowledge the suffering endured by Jews and asking him to reiterate his commitment to Catholic Jewish relationships by condemning the October the 7th Hamas attack. It's an interesting thing because Catholicism has a very interesting history with how they've been treating Jews. No doubt. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, probably are, you are probably aware of, um, of Vatican II. Mm -hmm. the Vatican reform from Pope uh, John II. Uh -huh. when they stopped blaming Jews for the crucifixion of yes, Jesus. Right. Yes. Right. It was my uncle Saul. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I thought that was quite a, a stunning revelation. It, didn't Hitchens um, always point out that during World War II that the popes would actually send birthday cards to Hitler? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I guess. sure. Yeah. Um, so I mean, there, there's there's real, you know, there's there's a political expedience. But there's no moral high ground here. No, absolutely. I mean, no, the Pope they're probably only sends... friends as long as they have a common enemy, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I assume that the Pope at that time would send Christmas cards to all major leaders. Mm -hmm. But maybe yeah. I'm wrong. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, so America. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nearly sixty-five thousand rape related pregnancies probably occurred in the 14 u.s states that have a near total abortion ban following the u.s supreme court's 2022 dobbs decision mm -hmm. but in those states on average per month only 10 legal abortions are performed so that's a a, a research uh, analysis published in the journal of internal medicine so it seems that a lot of rape a lot of women who are pregnant as a result of rape are not getting access to abortions mm -hmm. and this this is even in the in the states which have although they've banned abortion in general they've got an exemption to the ban on grounds mm -hmm. of rape right uh, this subject make, for, uh, makes me very frustrated because it's yes. actually an important uh, issue in society and it's still very hard to uh, argue with it, uh, with people about it. Mm. Yeah, it is. And it's, but, um, it's not been good for women, I'm afraid. Again, but, this is the, the, the second sex, you might call them, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, regard by the population. Mm -hmm. So I've... the other aspect of this report is that single people under 50 are having much less sex since Roe v. Wade was overturned. So presumably there's much more, um, what's the polite word for wanking? <laughs> <laughs> Wanking. Uh, it's John Richards, could you mind explaining in explicit detail what's wanking? I'm sure that's what you're <laughs> Masturbation. <laughs> oh, the thing where you chew food. I know about that. <laughs> so anyway, there's less sex going on, and I assume that that's, you know, um, two people's sex. Uh, but I, I don't think they've counted the number of people who go who undertake one person's sex. Right. Well, you know, then, of course, there's three or four person sex, which is a lot of fun. But, you know, you can... <laughs> well, I, I will admit I'm part of the problem, to be honest. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I didn't hear that. I've gone deaf. Yeah. So yeah, is my I, wife. 
She and said, since Ro, we are not having sex anymore. <laughs> 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 but the well, sad thing is... It's a, I think it's part... Uh, well, I'm a special case, but whatever. I yeah. think, in general, in society, this is a, a, a result of a social alienation. People don't have time to join together. They don't meet outside. They mm. all are always working. Mm. We've seen this happening earlier uh, with Japan, especially, or Korea. And mm. their uh, fertility rates are really, really bad, really problematic. Yeah, yeah. And there's and there's so much porn available on iPads. Who needs a partner? <laughs> But the problem is, is that it, in, in America, a problem that was, for the most part, fixed um, um, was obliterated uh, thanks to uh, Republicans and Trump. Um, and so you have women who are the victims of, of physical violence, sexual violence. Yeah. And then the society now says um, to, to, to burden you even more and create more emotional and physical violence that you can't get rid of um, this clearly unplanned pregnancy. And again, it's, it shows how religion in its most horrific form can take even a, a quote unquote secular democratic society like the United States and upend human rights. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's also sure. an aspect where it's men creating laws under the perspective of protecting women, right? Yeah. right? Uh, we make laws to make sure that, you know, future babies don't get damaged. But women are the bystander of they make babies, but we have to protect that kid. So they they don't make the rules. We make the rules. Mm -hmm. And through the the passive or the revocation of Roe v. Wade, you have yeah. like this pecking order where it's it's still a group of people in power trying to impose a will. You look at uh, Islam, you look at uh, like religious right. It's it's about maintaining power. At all yes. costs, particularly in a world of women, flux. Yes. and Our women are easy yeah. people to get uh, yeah. pegged down because they don't have enough political sway. What yeah. shocks me though is the women that support this. It shows how deep this indoctrination is mm -hmm. that they yeah. can clearly act in their least best interests it, yeah. for, for generations to come. And that's yeah, yeah. really a, the struggle with me for this. That's and these these pro-life people are only pro-life until it's born. And right. after that, they're not interested in childcare or, right. or anything well, of that sort. In, in regards mm. to that, I, I have a question for you. Uh, I've been arguing about abortion with some people on Facebook, and I think someone is lying to me, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think the well, no one ever lies on Facebook. No one ever lies on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm skeptical, a skeptical both ways, but just to be clear, uh, the person I was arguing, arguing with, I think was some American woman who said that um, there are all kinds of subsidies and uh, aid to women who get children. How true is that? Oh. Well, do you, if mean, do you mean in the States? Or yeah. yeah in the the reality is, is that the social safety net uh, for women who, who um, uh, uh, have children uh, without a partner who are just, you know, single parent, or even if they were parents uh, with a with a partner, uh, they're not very good. Mm. Um, um, WIC, which is like subsidy for um, uh, food stamps, uh, health care, um, yeah, the social safety net is, is more than frayed. It's broken in many places. Mm. I mean, the positive thing is that you have things like Obamacare, yep. um, um, and you do have Medicare and Medicaid, and you do have... Mm. Uh, certain programs, but it they're so uh, poorly funded, and the federal government gives money to states, and so as you find in a lot of states, that the more quote unquote red they are, the more conservative they are, the less money they give to unwed mothers. Yeah, yeah so that, it, being it's actively defunded. You know, yeah. if you go to New York or California, um, more liberal or blue states those services and that money, there might be more of it. It's not enough, but yeah, yeah. More versus yeah. let's say Mississippi and Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. They have control of the local budget so they can redistribute the federal money into exactly. different, different places. Yeah. yeah. Also kudos to New York for having open an open policy for allowing anybody to come over to get an abortion in New York. Yeah. Also D kudos, if that's possible to the States 
and you and I don't have to name which ones that are making it illegal to go to New York just to get an abortion. Mm -hmm. That seems like the craziest that's thing. That's a possible. really strange <laughs> policy, really. It, yeah. It's uh, the handmaid's tale, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, so you'll be pleased to hear that Britain doesn't get a scot-free here because <laughs> it, it emerged last year that six women had been prosecuted for procuring abortions. And this was... This is under a very ancient law that was uh, enacted 160 years ago. I, I can't remember the uh, the actual details of the the, the act. The, the I, I wasn't a, I wasn't around 160 years ago. Although you may you may dispute that. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is against the Person Act 1861. I think it was, wasn't it? Is it? Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, it, it, what's interesting is is that uh, nobody realised that this abortion law was still there, mm. and um, so there's now calls to sort of clean it up. But mm. meantime, um, I think um, uh, you know, conservative um, fundamentalist Christians have have pounced on it and have influenced the police to go around yeah. and arrest people for for breaching it. Yes, yes, and so six people were prosecuted women were prosecuted last year and that was twice as many in the one year than had been taken to court under this law in the previous 160 years all added up together wow so and and that's only the ones that were actually prosecuted because of course there were lots of others unknown number who were investigated, their phones were seized, they were prevented from contact with their children, they were questioned under caution, and the possibility of life imprisonment was mentioned, and they just had a miscarriage. Mm. Well, I, I would yeah. imagine, actually, also, John, that so, quite a few of these cases would have come to the Crown Prosecution Service and would have been um, rejected as not being necessary in the public in interest. I would, I would guess that is the case as well. I don't know what, what the figures are. Well, um, I, when, I, I, when I was a prosecutor, I would have sort of looked at looked at it yeah, along those yeah. lines. Mm. You wouldn't like well, if, you, if if someone in the audience is a woman who needs uh, abortion, um, they are free to come to Portugal where it's fully legalized. There you go. It's a commercial for Portugal. Thank oh, you, yeah. Diogo. <laughs> Right now, you may remember last week we had news about Gillian, no, no, Catherine Verbal Singh, who is a head teacher. And some months ago, she banned prayer rituals. It's gone on. It started out the, the Muslims. And let me say that her school is very much secular. Mm -hmm. And this is how this is how she's managed to keep good relations between all the different factions in her catchment because it's in uh, it's in it's near Wembley or Ealing it's over there in in West London and and it's a very mixed population so she has said no faith here a bit like France very much a small piece of France and, and it's worked she's got good relations between the all the different factions of pupils and the staff but a, uh, a a pupil decided that they wanted a Muslim pupil decided that they wanted a prayer room. This is um, maybe last year or the year before. The school doesn't have a, an opportunity to provide a prayer room. It's very cramped, a limited space. So she said, "You can pray in the in the in the uh, playground," and that was all right for a little while. Some other pupils joined in. And there they were doing their, you know, head touching, forehead touching the ground business. One or two more started adopting the uh, the headscarf and uh, rather than the school uniform, I guess. And then uh, intimidation, violence and racial harassment of teachers began. Uh, a teacher had uh, stones thrown at their house. And so in the end, she had to ban prayer even in the playground. And now a pupil has taken her to the high court, challenging the ban, saying it's against their rights, um, you know, human rights, when they should be allowed to worship. 
What a mess. Mm. Yeah, That's we what could do with are for. I mean, keep it there. We could do with taking religion right out of schools. Yeah, across the board, basically. Yeah. That's what churches people are, are really hateful, aren't they? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, these people might need the help of the satan satanic temple after school yes. project. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do I'd have an after school I'd be totally club. behind that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I'd, I'd uh, give the the quabs prayer. Uh, you know, our newly lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome, our noodles. W welcome, dread. We'd love you to come and do that, yeah. yeah. So, uh, when we when we go fully secular in school, there's an exception for your lot, okay. <laughs> right now, uh, it's back to um, America, where oh, well, I thought we were free, <laughs> <laughs> where, where there's an what are they called? An ancient faith group, um, and and they they meet at the St Phoebe Center for the Deaconess outside Boston, and they want to bring back female clergy. Okay, so they have a radio show, and they have a lot of Orthodox Christian listeners, and on the January the thirtieth broadcast they were examining the call to restore female deacons. So, I mean, first of all, the deacons are the lowest and third order of clergy in the Orthodox Church, and not every parish has them. But where they do exist, they help the priest with liturgical duties such as preparing the Eucharist, and they're almost, exclusive, they're almost exclusively male. So they, the Ancient Faith Radio, are looking at trying to bring back women in this role. Okay. What happened? Because they have a have a chat bar down the side of of their radio broadcast, and they got piled on. One commenter said, "Why should I care about women trying to subvert the major major orders?" Another one said, "This is such a joke," and somebody else said. This subject was too sensitive for their 17-year-old son. <laughs> somebody, else, yeah, somebody else said, St. Paul said, women should stay silent because they talk too much and are too opinionated in the church. <laughs> and that, that's, that's probably an accurate biblical quote. I'm, I'm not an expert. And uh, somebody else was very plain in his bias. He said, Deaconesses would turn the sanctuary into a brothel. Yeah, well, we know where this person has their right. adding. That that might help church attendance, though. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. The idea the idea was to um, clarify the question of women deacons, but in fact, <laughs> they set fire to the the, the proposal. <laughs> Now, a couple of very short issues here. Uh, the king, he's been mm -hmm. diagnosed as having cancer. Mm -hmm. And we all, we're all sorry to hear that. What's that, Brad? I didn't get that. What did you say? It's all the homeopathy he gets into. Oh, uh, yeah. probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. No, no I, it, no, I wouldn't want to sort of uh, talk up homeopathy. You're suggesting it has an effect. <laughs> yes. yeah, true enough. True enough. A, ne a negative one. Yeah. David, so, I see uh, you sharing the same look of confusion that I had for a moment. He's referring to the English king, not the American king, Julio Pinedo, king of <laughs> Bolivia, the <laughs> only king in America. Uh, you're talking about the outside kings. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should have made it clear. The king yeah. of the United Kingdom and the head of the Commonwealth. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We're back to politics across the Atlantic again, aren't we? Yeah. The one that we want to abolish. I'm just saying we have our own kings, Black History Month. It's a black king. It's a pretty cool king. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Martin Luther King. Yes. No, Luther no. King. Julio Canito, King of Bolivia. You can look uh, it up. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can you can bring us up to date on that but another time. Didn't he have a uh, prostate cancer? They they he checked. No. He um, had an enlarged prostate, uh, okay. which he went to hospital for an operation to reduce it. And while he was there, they discovered some other cancer. We don't mm. know what. Yeah, and and he's, now being, he's now being treated for that. 
But the importance to us as reporters on Global Atheist News is Stephen Cottrell, the Archbishop of York, has said the king's faith will sustain him through this. <laughs> From what I know of the king, he will be turning to God for strength and solace. Cancer is often harder for the family members, so I hope and pray for his family that it will bring them together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, what's interesting is that this is, this is what you get from the church. They will take almost any opportunity to sort of to yes. reinforce their message. Yes. But the, the, the weird thing that happened last week was when this story broke, it completely cleared the news channel for about two days. We, we didn't know what was going on in the world. There, there could yeah. have been revolutions and earthquakes and yes. all sorts of things. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's quite over the top. I mean, I, agree. I think um, he's, he's the equivalent of a, of a celebrity. So it would be interesting to hear about it, but that's about it. Yeah. Well, well, we can send them our hopes and prayers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it'd be nice if uh, it's one step closer to uh, getting rid of the monarchy altogether. <laughs> yeah. It would be great, wouldn't it? I mean, the other thing that, um, uh, th that a lot of people have been saying is that, of course, the king was instantly seen by the, uh, by the, the medical services and had, you know, ha had treatment like immediately. And, he, and within days, he's having yeah. radiotherapy or whatever it is. Whereas the rest, the rest of us have to wait for months right. for Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yes. That reminds me, there was a huge debacle about that in Portugal. Like, there were some wealthy, uh, wealthy parents of some children who had a very rare disease, and they uh -huh. uh, cut the line in, into the experimental medical treatments. But mm -hmm. meanwhile, people in Portugal with the same disease were waiting for months. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. mm -hmm. yeah, very true. Yeah. So, Dred, I'm afraid I'm going to start a campaign to get you put into the tower. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm not bitter that he's sick. I have nothing cheeky to add. I'm just saying, he, if his net worth is a billion and he's being supported by faith, can we just have the billion? Can we just trade <laughs> and he has <laughs> yeah. the money to something else? Yeah. yeah. There you go. So and finally. finally the other thing oh, is that the the, okay. the, the the royal family are running out of people because they keep losing them. You know, yeah, yeah. Prince Harry is gone. Prince That's Harry how the history is out of, out of action. So they're, they're running short of personnel now. Yes, yes. They're having they to bring in some retired people in their 70s mm -hmm. to come yes. and do the open yes. the thing. Well, it's about them. time Britain changes into a proper republic. Exactly. No, no, exactly. no, no. no. I, I'm, I'm volunteering to, 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 to you know, su support the, the, ro the royals and. And if they need me to head the monarchy, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Finally, that's very yeah. Hobbesian of you. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd offer. Finally, the National Secular Society has sent a letter to In the, the UK. Again, this is yes, UK. yes, it is. Yes, yes. We are a UK centered show, I'm afraid. The and of course, that that means we are the center of the world. Yeah. So, the, the National Secular Society has sent a letter to the Speaker of the House of Commons, that's Sir Lindsay Hoyle, saying that the current practice of conducting Anglican prayers at the beginning of meetings in the House of Commons and the House of Lords, we call them sittings here, uh, that fails to uphold the values of British society, such as equality, fairness, and respect for human rights and freedoms, because it makes it look as though one denomination of one religion, that is, the Anglican denomination of Christianity, is worth more than all the other faiths and beliefs, and it makes it look as though the, the government of the country belongs to the church of england rather than to the whole country yeah so, so that's another is, monarchy problem so if, yeah. so if you ever need a, a a pastafarian in the house of lords mm -hmm. i'll i'll take on the team. you'll step up yeah dread yeah. pirate to the rescue yeah well once we 
once we've got you out of the tower, uh, Graham, <laughs> yeah. I, I'll sponsor you for that role. I mean, a, a lot of local authorities in um, in in uh, the UK uh, have prayers at the beginning of their council meetings, yes. and yes. some of them have, um, you know, gone gone multicultural, have different yes. religion, you know, uh, rabbis and Buddhists yeah. and imams yeah. doing it, and and humanists, and I've done it on yes. three occasions yeah. myself. Yes. Well. In, yeah, yeah. in Vancouver, in BC, they actually outlawed that. They mm. uh, passed a mm. law to, to put an end yeah. to that. And mm. despite that, uh, there was a number of cities, I think the humanists did a, a, a survey and found like seven, one mm. of which was Vancouver, the largest city in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. had seven representatives of different religions, uh, Pastafarians not included. Well, here's a thought. Now that we've got uh, multi-faith members of the House of Commons, I think in order to be equitable, they should all do their prayers at the beginning of the hearings, the sittings, and then hopefully we wouldn't have any time left for them to do their political <laughs> nonsense. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, you've been wonderful. Yeah, Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and I hope well, to see you. Hope to see you again next time. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be on a new site, so uh, hopefully it's got good reception. Beautiful. Good. Yeah, yeah. Peace Say bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, Cheers. 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 Uh, was, was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? And, and the same applies to the Caribbean flag. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you, what do you have to say about that, guys?